I'm happy to be joined by the author of the new book, The Fighter Within, Chris Olick. Chris, you had a chance to talk to uh, a number of the most brilliant minds in combat sports. Rory McDonald, former UFC light heavyweight champion Rashad Evans, Firas Sahabi, Sean Shirk. Uh, is there anything that uh, piqued your interest that surprised you about some of these athletes and, and their mindset into the fight game? Oh, there was, there was lots, definitely. It was a journey that spanned eight years and I uh, tried to collect from the best minds in the business. So there was a lot that really inspired me from them. I didn't know that they had such struggles to get to the pinnacle of the sport, right? And, uh, and it really made me think that these guys are probably the hardest working individuals I've ever seen in my life uh, to get to that point in, that, in this sport. It's a tough sport as it is, but they went through a lot of trials and tribulations uh, throughout their journey to get there, um, and they succeeded, as we know. You say uh, in, in the book, you talk about uh, your own journey and some of the parallels that some of these fighters have had, because really, we're all humans. We all have to go through a struggle, and even to get to the top of a sport like mixed martial arts, there's just regular things that people have to go through. Yes, of course, and that's the beauty of it. I learned that these are regular individuals like you and I. Um, they just do unbelievable things, and um, I tried to correlate some of my stories throughout life, you know, some of the hardships, some good points uh, to put in there because, like you said, we're all just people. Um, and I did really notice that there, um, or I should say I'm a strong believer now after sitting down with the best minds in the world, you know, Faraz Zahabi, Fedor Emelianenko's uh, of the world. Um, I'm a strong believer in the notion um, of being a grinding fighter in life, uh, in the ring, just everywhere, and success. And uh, not just in the affluential context. Um, uh, you know, the, 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 as much as all this, uh, the complexity and juxtaposition that kind of entails, what I'm getting at is, you know, you can't get to this point and seemingly have the good life without being a grinding fighter. And that's something definitely that, uh, that they instilled in me because they had to go through, through a lot to, to get there. What I love, uh, one of the, the chapters is talking about Sean Shirk. Of course, you, you see into the now of mixed martial arts, modern days. But it's interesting to see what some of these guys had to deal with. Uh, Sean Shirk, ranked as the number two guy in the world at the time, released after he loses to Matt Hughes, finds himself in purgatory. Meanwhile, the rest of the entire world recognizes that this guy is one of the top fighters on the planet. Yes, it's unbelievable. Uh, you know, th those are things I wasn't aware of before I got to sat sit down with these guys. But it, I thought it was incredible. He's working in a factory, ranked number two in the yeah. world. Uh, you know, losing only to Matt Hughes, and Matt Hughes was unstoppable at the time. Uh, pound for pound king, if I, if I can throw that out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, then he finally gets a fight. He fights for pride. He beats the rings champion, and nobody's calling. Yeah. He doesn't get called back. He doesn't get to go back to the UFC, and he's still stuck in a mundane job working long hours, uh, you know, until ultimate fighter occurred and he just decided out of the blue he had given up on fighting he was just keeping fit for himself and uh, he called his manager and said hey let's try it now you know this yeah. thing seemed to have blown up let's see what happens the next thing you know he's fighting GSP but but I, I did find it very uh, particular that being ranked number two at that time and nothing yeah just in all these different the different stories that you hear from all these athletes you know, one of the th things that you talk about, you had t a chance to spend uh, time with Fedor Emelianenko, maybe one of the most revered fighters to ever compete in mixed martial arts. And I think the fans, myself included, have, a, have a, an idea of, of Fedor, only based on what we've seen in Pride and his time fighting in Affliction and Strike Force, that he's this quiet, reserved guy that doesn't really want the spotlight. But you had a chance to talk to his wife, who said the exact opposite, that basically Fedor is an attention whore. That is correct. That was amazing. It took three sit-downs with the man. Um, uh, you know, to really get a lot out of him. And I did also have to bypass, bypass him and go to his wife, Oksana. She was nice enough to let me in on the, uh, you know, on what it's like, how, what he is like behind closed doors. And it was amazing. He is an attention whore. He likes gifts, you know what I mean? He likes giving gifts too, she said, but he likes gifts. He needs his family there. Um, it is true. He doesn't like the spotlight from the outside. Sure. That, that definitely, you know, that doesn't change. But, uh, you know, behind closed doors, he's, uh, you know... Uh, uh, Just big, a regular guy. Big regular guy, you know, like you'd never think he is, you know, uh, this biggest uh, fighter. And in my eyes, he's, you know, he's one of my favorites. So that's why I, I had to get him. But I saw him as this big stoic Russian and, you know, he doesn't talk much. And, but he actually, he cracks jokes yeah. and, you know, he's, he's just a regular guy. 
Why did you decide to put these stories on, on paper? What, what was the need to get your story out to the world? I noticed that I had a knack in trying to break down some barriers and walls with these guys, um, you know, when I interviewed them for side projects and so on. And I noticed that they imparted knowledge on me that can't be found, just, you know, regularly reading it out of magazines. So I decided that, you know, it's a big passion of mine. Um, I like writing as well, it's a great creative outlet, but um, the fact that I could mine things out of these people that I didn't believe were found or accessible, um, that made me think that, you know what, maybe we can reach an audience here and really get a deeper version of the guys that we idolize, because that was the primary thing. I started this as one of the biggest uh, fans, mm -hmm. and that's why uh, uh, you know, I went from there. So I really dove deep with them, and like I said, two, three interviews with each guy to really get what, what I thought was, uh, was golden for, for the fans. And what are you hoping some of the takeaways will be for the readers when they, when they dive into this book and they maybe hear, read some of the things that they didn't know about their, their favorite fighters? What are you hoping that the readers get? You know what, there's a few parts when I sat down and I said I'm going to write this thing and I wrote it out and I said I'm going to stick to it and I, I, I think I did. Uh, I want it to be entertaining. I want people to have uh, at least one aha moment. I didn't know that or I learned something. Um, I want people to be able to take some of these principles and utilize them in everyday life and business and, and you know on the mats when they're training. Um, and I wanted to dive deeper into the psychology, like I said, because a lot of times we scratch the surface with these fighters and we're, we're still such a uh, youthful sport. I wanted to go much deeper to really show what it takes to be the best in the world. You can get uh, some of the stories from some of the most interesting characters in mixed martial arts. It is the fighter within. Everyone has a fight. He is the author, Chris Olick. Thanks so much. We will catch you more here on Fight News Now.